Hi there. In this screencast, we'll look at using foreign currencies. So first of all, I just need to turn foreign currencies on. Let's edit preferences, multiple currencies, company preferences. Yes, and we're gonna use, choose yes. So uh, this is the home currency and I'll choose, okay. And okay, and just take some moment. The next thing to do is to add a bank account for our uh, foreign currency. So I'll go to my chart of accounts, add a new account. It's a bank account, choose continue. And now that we have foreign currency turned on, we can choose the currency for accounts. So this is uh, RBC, USD account, the currency is in US dollars, the bank account is 200-990-1, and save and close. Now, for those of you using the uh, CCI Learning uh, book, they have you create an account called um, Foreign Exchange Gain and Loss. Do not create that account. It gets created automatically when a transaction that requires that account is entered. So I'll show that to you. Do not create the account manually. It's uh, superfluous. All right, uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is add uh, my exchange rates. So I'm done with my chart of accounts. I'm gonna to go to lists. Now that I've turned on foreign currencies, we now have a currency list. Uh, shows you all of the currencies available. I'm just gonna look at the active ones, just a handful of them. And US dollar is what we're interested in. Um, we have uh, activities here at the bottom of the screen. We can download the latest exchange rates. So it hooks into an API on the internet. All right, um, I'm going to manually add the exchange rate for U.S. dollars. And the exchange rate back then was 1.2358, apparently. And I'll choose OK. Uh, the first transaction I'll do is to transfer um, funds from uh, our Canadian RBC account to our US RBC account. So under uh, banking, we have a transfer funds. You can do this via general journal entry, but it also works in a transfer funds entry. This is on March 2nd. No class, like school in July. And transfer funds from RBC checking to RBC USD. And you can choose which currency to transfer it. And we need a certain number of dollars in US dollars in this account, so we're gonna use the US dollar as opposed to the home currency. And on the second, the exchange rate is now 1.2398. And I'm gonna choose save a new and go back there and then look at the bookkeeping. So you'll notice that everything is converted into Canadian dollars. Uh, next thing we'll do is create a US vendor. And this is Southwest Interiors. As of March 4th. 
2016. Currency is US dollars. Now notice that the date becomes grayed out once you choose the currency. So if you need to change this date, make sure you do so before you change the currency. Payment settings, notice that we have credit limit in US dollars here. About thousand. And we'll add the terms. Affects the bottom line. And um, for all, um, if you live in Canada, um, all of your foreign currency transactions are not subject to tax. So I'm done here, which is okay. So under sales tax settings, tax code exempt country, United States, under account, additional info. This is a supplier. And okay. So let's enter a bill using that foreign vendor. So I have them selected here so I can choose new transactions, enter bills, March 7th. And the exchange rate is 1.2350. And we're buying three five oh ones. And they're costing us 315. Again, we're exempt for tax. And it should be 116708. So notice you get both currencies on your bill. Again, all transactions transactions are converted to the home currency. So if we look at if I save a new if I look at my bookkeeping. Again, it's in the home currency, which is in this company, Canadian dollars. All right, so we're going to go and pay this bill. It'll be on a different date that we pay it, so the exchange rate will be different, so that currency exchange gain and loss account will be affected. So you'll see that that appears automatically. If I quickly go to my chart of accounts here, my lists, um, you'll see... Save gain. So nothing for that account name. So let's quickly uh, pay that bill. So we can use um, pay bills. Notice we don't see Southwest here because we're using accounts payable. When I choose accounts payable US, now we see the Southwest bill. Um, so again, we did not create this account. QuickBooks did that for us, and that's why it's called QuickBooks. It quickly adds these things for us. We don't have to. We're paying that amount on March 21st. And we're paying it out of the US account. The exchange rate is now different and pay selected bills. So if you want to look at that transaction, I can just go to the Southwest Interiors, Transactions All, and I'll look at that bill payment. So if we look at the transaction journal, you'll see that now there's this account exchange gain or loss. It now exists on our chart of accounts, automatically created for us by QuickBooks. We do not have to create that manually. If you do create a manual, you'll have two accounts of the similar name, which you'll have to merge. All right, the next thing we'll look at is uh, foreign sales. For our foreign customers, we want to create um, prices for our items in their currency. Uh, the reason for that is we don't want prices to change as the exchange rate changes. That will result in sometimes uh, items being more expensive one day than they were the previous day, um, which the customer may complain about. So we want to um, add a price for all of our items that we offer to U.S. customers. So uh, under lists, we have price level list. And I'm going to add a new price level. And the price level name 
is uh, US dollar. Currency, US dollar. And we just have a handful of items that we're not that we're offering to our so two twenty. Custom price is six hundred and fifty dollars. One oh one. Two eighty five. Four oh five. 80, 501, 365, and 510, 615. And I'll choose OK. All right, let's uh, create a foreign customer. This is uh, Mrs. Amanda K. Jackson. As of March 9th. And under the payment settings to ensure that she gets the uh, US price on an invoice automatically, we don't have to choose it, we'll use that one. And we give uh, we're giving her a three thousand dollar U.S. credit limit and terms. She has to pay within thirty days. Taxes. Oh, we can choose exempt. And okay. All right, let's go and sell her something. Manja Jackson, new transactions, invoice. This is on March twenty third. This is a product invoice. We're shipping by UPS and she's buying a 220 and a 405. And a 405. And notice she gets the US dollar price because we chose that on her record. The exchange rate should be 1.2345. And we should have a total of 9119. And again, it gets converted to the Canadian dollars in the actual bookkeeping. Well, thank you. Thank her for her business and go ahead and post. All right, so now Amanda's gonna pay this invoice. So I'll choose new trans transactions, receive payments. And this is happening on March 30th. Notice accounts receivable, US automatically gets chosen for us. And the exchange rate is now 1.2354. Paying by a check, 689, and we're depositing this into the US account. And it should be 1.2354, and save and close. So, again, so that's using multiple currencies in QuickBooks. Again, you simply turn on the feature and uh, download your interest rates every day, uh, change them for every transaction as frequently as you need to. Thanks so much for watching.